Let me welcome the uh, director and writer and creator of Who's Behind Black Art, John Campbell. <laughs> Film subject and CEO of Kickstarter, Everett Taylor. <laughs> Producer, Phyllis Hollis of Cerebral Bro Women. Film subject and artist, Adrian Armstrong. And producer and founder of Good Black Art, Phil Collins. It's, I saw it on my laptop and it's just so beautiful to see the art on a big screen. Um, so glad we were able to show that. So uh, we'll start with Everett. <laughs> Um, what would you say about the state of black art sales today? Sorry, I'm like dealing with a sinus infection. I can barely, I feel like I'm not speaking and projecting so well. I just got off a flight, but I'm really happy to be here. The state of the black art market right now is, it's a really interesting time. It's funny when we were doing the film, I was predicting some of the things that was about to happen because, um, you know, at the time of the film, I was at the tail end of my time at a company called Artsy. And at Artsy, I had um, probably more data about the art market and seeing the trends of the art market than probably anyone else. Um, and I already started seeing the decline in interest of black art, where you saw this spike, um, you know, post George Floyd, during COVID, et cetera, et cetera. I could start to see it start trending downwards. Um, and so I think that trend has unfortunately continued in a lot of ways, um, not for black collectors themselves and, and, and collectors of color, uh, but for many white collectors that I think felt a sense of guilt during that time. Um, and so um, I still see a lot of prominent black artists still thriving and still making incredible work and still selling work, but the, the kind of veracity of like interest in black art, especially black figurative art, um, has definitely declined during that time. One of the, well, I think one of the beautiful things that, though is that I think uh, black abstraction, um, there has been a, a bit of a surge in interest in black abstraction um, um, that, is, that has been really beautiful to watch as well. But unfortunately you saw kind of that, um, that kind of peak and kind of decline. But I was listening to someone last night speak and they were saying, they were talking about how there was a, a spike in interest to support black people um, like in 1968. And one of the things that he said that was that maybe that is just the way of the world where you spike and it subsides, but there was progress made every single time. And you can't deny the progress that was made during that time. And, the, and people in positions of power, artists that have established markets during that time as well. Thank you. For someone who doesn't know a whole lot about the art world like me, can uh, someone in the film said something about not flipping art and wanting uh, the necessity to hold on to it. Can you explain, can you, someone uh, talk about what that means? Uh, about, about not flipping art. Um, it's interesting, um, and I'm, I don't know if Phyllis can and speak about this as well. Um, you know, it's very, very common, uh, especially for white collect collectors to flip art. Um, and I think what's difficult as a black collector to collect art that you intrinsically have a different type of attachment to the art. Um, and where a lot of white collectors can look at art as just a commodity that they can just buy and flip very easily. And that's what, when you talk about what happened with the art market and the, black, the state of the black art market was a lot of the white collectors that were collecting um, during those couple years, they started flipping those works and sometimes maybe even months after um, they collected work. And so I think there's just a different type of attachment and responsibility that black collectors feel to not selling those works. But it also prevents some economic opportunities for black collectors because many black collectors don't feel they have the, the ability to flip works in the same way, which, de which can um, impact um, in a negative way an artist's market. And Phyllis, I don't know if you wanted to say anything. The, main, uh, the comment I would make is that the problem with flipping as well as in auctions is that the artist doesn't necessarily get to participate in the upside. And it would be great via technology, uh, I know it's being done outside of the U.S. 
that the artist, you know, there's ways to track the uh, transaction so that artists can start to get compensated for their, their price appreciation. Um, but I guess there could be another discussion, which is, you know, is art an asset class? And are you buying it as an investment, uh, short-term investment, long-term investment? But um, I think there's a lot of changes, a lot of things that um, the gallery world, the art world in general should do to make sure that artists can participate in the upside of their work. Yeah, I think both of you um, articulated that, that beautifully. I would say one of the things that we're trying to do at Good Black Art is look at art collecting on a spectrum. On one end, you've got the collectors who are uh, purchasing art for the investment purpose, and on the other uh, end is uh, collectors who are purchasing just for what they love. Uh, and we're encouraging art collectors to be right there in the middle. Um, because I think there's a world where you know you can have both and support artists who are doing extremely well, but also really love the work, love the narrative, and live with that. Um, so that's something that we're really trying to to do as we have more conversations with our collectors and um, as we as we grow with them. John, what what drew you to the five artists that you you picked? There's so many emerging artists. Um, I would honestly say, and first of all, shout out to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, really appreciate your uh, encouragement, enthusiasm, and support. Um, I would honestly say that for me, it was their story. I really wanted an audience to feel a connection with uh, the artists because there were a lot of people. And I met these artists through Phil Collins, through Good Black Art. Um, and the intention was that we were going to interview people from around the world that are connected to Good Black Art. But Adrian, Mario, Jewel, Tay, and Lorena, they really spoke to me. And I am not someone that knows enough about Black Art. And I wanted to make sure that even on my own journey that I could listen and learn from them. So that was really a big part of it for me because I felt that that's the relatable factor that an audience can connect with. And I detect an accent. You're British. What is the state of black art in, in London, in Britain? Uh, I think these guys would be better to answer that question on a broader scale. Uh, what would you say about um, you have a, a, a lot of incredibly talented curators, um, people working in the space, especially black women in the space in London. Um, abstraction, black abstraction has definitely been the thing that I've seen thriving the most out of London with, with artists like Jade Fada Jatumi and Rachel Jones um, as examples. Um, so I think it's, it's, you know, I think it's strong and it's solid. I think uh, the UK art market a lot of times reflects what's happening in the US. Um, one thing I will say about uh, just collecting in general is like it's a very copycat league and so people tend to share information and um, collect a lot of the same artists no matter where they are in the world. Adrian, after I saw um, the screener of this film, I started following you on IG. Your art really speaks to me. Can you talk about uh, just how it feels seeing yourself on the, in, you know, on the big screen and having your story up there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit weird, uh, but it's cool. Like I, I never would have thought that I would experience or go through anything like this, and um, I'm just extremely grateful. I feel blessed um, when we when we did the first showing. I brought my entire family. I don't know if y'all saw it on there, but. I brought my entire family from Omaha and and about 30, 40 people from Texas. And so like it was just really great like experiencing that with them, especially since a lot of them haven't been to New York ever. So I felt like just really proud to like be able to do that for them and experience that with them. So yeah. I, I think one of the I like in I think it was episode three when you brought in the the elders, the council of elders as such to talk to people and having communities to support you is so important. And I just want to talk about, you know, how you all are fostering community, Adrian, if you are connecting with these artists, 
on a regular basis, fellas, if you're doing anything with cerebral women to um, help artists stay in community with each other. Adrian, you can start. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like uh, me and all the all the artists in the in the documentary are friends, and we stayed in contact. You know, definitely an open line of communication, um, as well as uh, the curators, the collectors. You know, um, I feel like this was a jumping off point for a lot of uh, relationships after the after the um, shooting of everything. Um, so it's been really great, and like it. You know everything that you hear in the documentary was was not fake. Like they're definitely all in on the support. So I'm really appreciative of that. Yeah, I would say that this film is a really good example of community, right? Um, one of the things that we cared about when we were going through that that casting um, uh, process with the artists, but also the contributors, was making sure that we were representing the full ecosystem. So we had the merging all the way to the most established across artists and curators and arts organizations and people on the, the more professional business and marketing side, because that's really what it is like every day that, that we're, that we're kind of going through and supporting each other, not just for these specific projects, but we all have, I don't know, probably five jobs each. So we're always connecting with each other. Do you know this artist? Do you know this curator? I hear this show is coming up, so I can make that introduction for you. Um, Thomas Seymour III, who's not here today, um, but uh, what, what an amazing connector to help us really cultivate um, this robust group of people who are moving culture forward, but are also really contributing to the uh, the progress for a lot of artists um, uh, just across the board. So I would say this film is a perfect example of what community looks like for us on a daily basis. Pre-COVID, <clears throat> pre-COVID I was at a talk at the Brooklyn Museum and it was a talk between uh, Antoine Sargent and Titus Kafar. I don't have an art background. And um, Titus said, art will save us. I was clueless. I had no idea what that meant. But I was really curious. And, you know, I was going to museums, uh, gallery, curated talks. And, you know, I never really felt that I understood the message that the artist was sending. So what my podcast has done, in addition to 175 new friends uh, in 175 therapy sessions, um, you know, artists, their values are special, and I think their values are what solidifies a community. Uh, it's, their values are what helps us be sensitive to each other and what we need. Um, so being in the art world and producing this podcast, um, I now understand how art will save us. And so I'm very grateful to the work that artists do, and I'm very grateful for this documentary. Thank you so much, John. I can say for me, it definitely has, I mean, we follow each other all the time. And I do feel like, to Phil Collins's point, um, these are my people. You know, I really do feel that it has broadened um, my horizons and educated me in a greater way of um, learning and appreciation. Shout out Juan, our editor. He's the editor for the documentary sitting right here. <laughs> and uh, also my brother, by the way, Joel over here, he did the music on the entire documentary. Susan Chapman Hughes at the back, executive producer, and Valerie. I'm sorry, I had to just mention, excuse my shameless plugs, but these are the people that helped to make it happen, so uh, very important. But yeah, it definitely has uh, encouraged me to have a broader sense of family and uh, community. Um, you know, uh, this is my brother right here, so, you know, it's, it's people that will be there for you and people that you should be there for. So um, it really um, has changed me, for sure. Um, before I open it up for audience questions, I just want to remind you that this film is eligible for the Audience Award. So there's information on your physical ticket, if you would like to cast your vote. And also in the lobby, there are QR codes that will help you vote. And you can see this film online until the 26th. 
And where else are you, are there more episodes and where else can we see more? We're, we're back here on Monday um, at 2.45. We're screening here again at Doc NYC, which is great. Um, that's all we're doing for now here in New York. <laughs> Any questions for the, the panel? Just seeing this made me feel so connected, especially like the Haitian pieces. Like we're seeing a lot of shit happen now, and it's just such a reminder that we've been at this for a long time. So congratulations again. So you talk about art being um, like our savior. Right? That is the answer. That is the answer. How do you all feel about the rise of AI, and how does that impact possibly the art world? I'll make a short comment, and that is um, when NT, uh, NFTs were first introduced, one of my Philistine friends um, reached out and said, oh, you know, the galleries and museums are really going to suffer here. And I just thought to myself, he's ignorant. But at the end of the day, you know, AI, NFTs, whatever, it doesn't really allow you, us to view the work and feel the work. You have to see it. Um, that's the only comment I have to make. Who wants to take on the next? Uh, come on, come on. Am I like the, the designated tech guy? Oh, shit. Um, I'll say this. Um, look, uh, physical art and the way art is made today is not going anywhere. Um, and so uh, a lot of the people that have... Um, got interested in digital art and NFTs. Originally, one of the things I noticed, a common thread, was these were people that were not interested in art themselves. They were interested in uh, what it could do monetarily for them. Um, and that is just really anti what art is all about. Like, when you really meet these artists, man, I think one of the most inspiring thing about artists is, like, their commitment to this, you know? Um, you have artists, you know, Altoraz was talking about Derek Adams. I mean, Derek for years was like just in the community supporting artists, you know, not making a lot of money from his work. And it took a long time before he became Der the Derek Adams, you know. Um, and there's so many artists that are just like, you know, you know, keep going, keep going for years and years where a lot of people, when I meet young artists, a lot of times I say, like, are you really in this? because this is a commitment, this is a lifetime commitment to, to truly do this. I think a lot of the people that are attracted to digital art, AI, generated art, and things like that, it's kind of a moment for them, you know? But there are people that are in it for the long term, and there are already really incredible artists that are using AI and using technology um, as a, <clears throat> as a part of their work. I mean, one of my favorite artists, Martine Sims, has been using technology as a part of her artwork for a very long time. And so I think the, there's going to be some really, really you know, amazing artists that are able to you know, use it and, and, and create a different lane for themselves. Um, but I think the way artists traditionally made in painting, the, the feel, the smell, the, the emotions that it evokes, um, it's just uh, different. You know, um, but yeah, that's my opinion. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, uh, first of all, it's a great film. Um, but at one point in the film that I was really interested in, we spoke about connecting the dots, about the art world being fragmented, black art. Is there any, uh, I don't think anybody may not think about, or speak about how those dots are yeah, I, I can answer that. I think um, it, it's it's many folds here, but one of the things I'll, I'll talk about is geographic uh, geographic diversity. One of the things that we've seen at Good Black Art is on the back end, we hear artists um, who are everywhere outside of New York ask the question of how do we get to New York how do we show in New York? What curators are in New York that we can meet? So what we've been thinking about and what we're really excited about planning in 2024 is how do we take 
this, not necessarily the film, but the connections, the, the infrastructure, the knowledge that we've gained with Good Black Art, being in New York and being part of the ecosystem, and take that to places like Tennessee, take that to places like Atlanta, take that to places um, like London or, or, or beyond. I think that's really one of the things that we're interested in is connecting the dots geographically, and that's the kind of the first step. And then we start to see all of these other angles, whether it's uh, connecting to other sectors, whether that's design or technology or music, um, to really uh, have, a, again, a broader conversation um, about our, our community. So what we do at Good Black Art is we amplify black narratives at scale using art as a communication tool. And there's a lot of ways that we are really excited. But again, I think the first step for us is really taking what we have learned here and sharing it with all these other um, black uh, communities that are thriving in, in other places that just don't have that connection to the ecosystem the way that we do here. Anyone want to add to that? I'll just say this, the internet is like the great equalizer in a lot of ways. Um, artists that would've, would've never been discovered by collectors, galleries, et cetera, et cetera, due to internet, due to social media, uh, due to platforms like Artsy, et cetera, et cetera, are now being discovered by people um, all over the world. When I was at Artsy, the average purchase uh, on Artsy traveled, I think, over 3,000 miles. Um, so, you know, people are buying work from all over the world, so it kind of, I mean, this is slightly different, but there's one thing I will say. It's so important to support artists, black art, right? There's, this is something I've been learning from these guys. I think it's critical because it's not just about buying a $10,000 piece. There are young artists that um, we can support, and it helps even on their journey. Uh, and I don't know if you want right. <laughs> right. No, but seriously, I think that that's a point, right? Isn't that something that I think we can all do? There's, if you go to Good Black Art, you'll see um, you know, art on the website that are really in your budget. If you're thinking, okay, well, I, I just can't afford something too expensive. But the intention is let's also raise up a lot of these artists and support Black Art. I think we have time for one more. You had a question? Okay, uh, I want to ask uh, um, regarding Uh, uh, Ghanaian artists and abstraction doing that. Most of the Ghanaian artists I know are, are, are in figurative. And I think, um, this is just my personal opinion, uh, but I do think with the success of artists like Amawako Boafo, um, Otis uh, Kwame Chikweko, a lot of these artists started to start painting very similar and, and leaning towards figurative because that was what was selling over the, next, over the past few years. And I do think this is a beautiful time now where I think a lot of West African artists will start to experiment more um, with abstract, and just black artists in general will experiment more with um, abstraction um, due to the shift um, in the market and the time to really explore their practice um, a lot better, better. But there's so many talented young black abstractionists from Reginald Sylvester, Rachel Jones, Jade Fado Jutumi. There's so many um, Vaughn Spann to name um, that are, are doing some really, like Vaughn is doing some like really large scale stuff, but not, I don't know any West Africans. I don't know if anyone knows. Cool. I would like to say something about abstraction versus figurative. And I'm just gonna comment and I'm gonna hand it over to you, okay? Um, I was recently at a dinner with an abstract artist and someone in the audience who was you know, a collector and older, so I'm going to assume in that he's seen a lot of art, bought a lot of art, studied a lot of art. Um, he asked, so it was a uh, white collector asking a black artist, a black abstract painter, how do you find representation in abstract art? Because with figurative art, it's obvious, right? So my challenge is for me to uh, start to understand that 
And so I'm going to start featuring abstract painters so that I can start to understand that. Um, but do you want to comment on? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to piggyback off of that. That's a great uh, segue. Um, I, I won't speak as uh, founder of Good Black Art. I'll speak as a collector. Um, and I, I started collecting back in 2017 alongside my partner. And in the beginning of our uh, collection, I mean, we were we were buying um, art from all over the world, primarily black emerging artists like Mario and Adrian and Lorena and Jewel, the whole gang. Um, but as uh, as I kind of transitioned into Good Black Art, um, I realized that the our, our collection lacked diversity in mediums. Um, so we had to kind of do a little bit of a, a reshift and really thinking about abstract art. We had to think about photography. We had to think about sculptural work and really grow the conversation. Um, and we applied that to good black art as well. So um, uh, there's a lot of really great um, emerging artists like um, Darren Cooper and um, Demetrius Wilson. I know uh, he was recently on your show. Uh, Will Maxson, who we just had on, who are wonderful artists and are exploring um, abstract in a really, really interesting way that um, uh, that, that is also helping me learn. Um, so a lot of what you see on Good Black Art is very much a reflection on uh, my own personal journey as a collector and art enthusiast. Um, so we just give all that right back. So I completely agree with that. So much to learn. Huh? A lot. This is a, a great conversation, but I, I think we have to wrap it up. Thank you so much for all you all are doing for expanding um, what black imagery and beauty and art is. I really appreciate it. Adrian, your teacher was very wrong. Um, Extremely wrong. Uh, and thank you all for coming.